Okay, Captain America the Winter Soldier. I will safely say this has been Marvel's best sequel so far. Most of their sequels have been kind of lackluster. This one actually, you know, it is, it's Captain America trying to fit in with the way things are now. If you've seen any of the trailers, it's pretty much given away the vast majority of the movie. If you went to see Thor, you saw probably one of the, probably, probably one of the better action sequences, which of course is the elevator fight scene. <clears throat> so if you've seen the trailers, you know the basic plot. S.H.I.E.L.D. has become a much larger military industrial complex and is in the process of doing a new project. That project will be giant helicarriers that will allow them to eliminate the threats before they begin. Okay. Doesn't quite sound legal, but, you know, they, after the war on Manhattan, they pretty much were able to get, they said like quadrupled funding. So they pretty much have funding from the World Security Council. You would call it the Illuminati if you wanted to. <clears throat> and things just don't quite fit right with Captain America, who then essentially ends up kind of going against S.H.I.E.L.D. You've seen, again, you've seen in the trailers, you've pretty much seen S.H.I.E.L.D. things, S.H.I.E.L.D. people and S.H.I.E.L.D. weaponry attack Captain America. So this is pretty much Captain America versus S.H.I.E.L.D. Action sequences are done very well. Well, they do their, uh, the, the, initial, the initial thing where it's kind of watching Splinter Cell with a shield, and he's going against uh, Batroc the Leaper, played by George St. Pierre. Great fight sequence. Fantastic fight sequence. It's given just the right amount of credibility for it. Then they go through long, kind of drawn out, almost like political sort of banter. With the occasional joke thrown in there. This one is nowhere near as lighthearted as other movies. This one is pretty much, if uh, if the Marvel Universe was done by Nolan, but they still throw in some one-liners. So it's Captain America, Falcon. It's not actually his name, but it's part of the project he was in. You know, the person they had to play, Sam Wilson, fantastic. When he cuts a one-liner, it actually kind of makes sense, because he doesn't really know what's going. He's not a Shield operative, and Black Widow, and of course, the Winter Soldier. Of people who sat behind me who talked the majority of the movie, when he does the reveal, we're like, wait a minute, wait, well, who, who's, who's, who's that? They, they pretty blatantly do flashbacks to Bucky Barnes, and Catherine walks through a Smithsonian Institute thing where he looks at a picture of Bucky Barnes. They do flashbacks of when he lost Bucky Barnes. So when he reveals himself, and he is, of course, Bucky Barnes, that's not really a spoiler. Because that's the Winter Soldier. It's it's Bucky Barnes. It is Captain America's former, you know, best friend, essentially back from the dead, who is an expert assassin with a metal arm. His character, while having very little dialogue, has such a great visual presence and has such a great job emoting that you actually do kind of feel sorry for him. Now, who of course is the main villain? Well, the only other person I ever show in the first is Robert Redford. So you can kind of tell. With Captain America on the run from S.H.I.E.L.D., S.H.I.E.L.D. essentially is the villain. You know, fight sequences, done very good. Again, if you watch Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you did see the assault on Nick Fury. Again, Sam Jackson blows out of the park in this one. Sam Jackson, Robert Redford, fantastic. Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson. Ugh. Chris Evans does a good job of playing like the ultimate Boy Scout. And Scarlett Johansson does a decent job. They do try to try to play up a almost like a sexual chemistry that really doesn't kind of exist. Which kind of falls somewhat flat. But overall a very solid movie. Is it the greatest superhero movie of all time? No. I'm still going to say it, it's, it's, not, it's not quite the Dark Knight. It's the closest thing Marvel has done to that style of film, and they do it very well. But it's not quite there. It doesn't quite have enough people putting in, you know, beautiful performances to quite put it to that level. So that's all I'm going to say about that before I get into some of the spoilers. 
So you got five, four, three, two, one, goose egg. So we're getting to some of the spoilers. If you've been watching Marvel's Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know that S.H.I.E.L.D. has different groups and almost has kind of like a shadowy presence to it. Oh, that's because after Hydra was defeated, they weren't actually defeated. Some of their head scientists were picked up by S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, that first tells you one thing. S.H.I.E.L.D. has Hydra scientists working for it. S.H.I.E.L.D. is Hydra. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been infiltrated by Hydra, and Hydra has taken over all the higher levels of S.H.I.E.L.D. The idea behind having Insight, which is an algorithm created by created by one of the, the Hydra scientists, is pretty much sending up the ships to do algorithms to find out anybody who at any point in time could be a remotely a dissonant against Hydra, and by extension against S.H.I.E.L.D., and is going to kill them all. Essentially, they have three giant machines, three giant helicarriers, that are fully designed to pretty much kill like 20 million people on the planet to make it a perfect utopia. The idea of being at the safest place for humanity is always the cage. You put your enemies in the cage, you put your heroes in the cage, either way you end up being safe. That, that's kind of a, that is so more of a Brubaker viewpoint, it's somewhat heavy-handed, and that for me was somewhat detrimental to the movie. <clears throat> There are two sequences afterwards, you know, through the end credits. One is a, a Baron, I am drawing a blank, I want to say it's like Stuker. He talks about different sorts of things in the Age of Miracles. Since Marvel Studios cannot contractually use the term mutants, they have to call them miracles. This, of course, ends up being your first time of seeing Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch is floating in boxes that makes you explode. Quicksilver, ironically, the still shot they had Quicksilver looked horrible. Seeing him stuck in a cage, you know, shirt all torn up, just looking all disheveled. Occasionally, like, speed blitzing back and forth into the walls. Fantastic. Oh, and guess what? The guy also has Loki's staff. That was nice. That worked well. The one at the end is Bucky Barnes walking through the same Captain America exhibit. Seeing the Bucky Barnes thing and kind of having like his memories jogged. Almost more or less showing that if Chris Evans doesn't want to be Captain America anymore, they can pretty easily have the Winter Soldier take his place, much of they did in the comics. <clears throat>